minute is three balls, two strikes. Good pitch on a 3-2 count. Catfish threw the fastball out away from Garrett. He lost him. This telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the commissioner of baseball is prohibited. Here's a tough out in one of the finest number two hitters in the lineup in baseball today, Felix Mian, the Mets' second baseman. He can handle the bat. He's a good hit and run man. Excellent bunner. Mando plays him shallow. He's bunted for one hit in this series. Fly ball down the right field line. Out in no man's land. Dick Green, a great running catch in that deep foul territory here at the Oakland Coliseum. He ran a long ways for that one. Before the ball game, the Oakland A's looked like a dispirited ball club, but with this first fine play by Dick Green in the long run, they sure don't show it right now. He made a great play, went well beyond the foul line. In this ballpark, that distance between the foul line and the stands is a factor many times. That would have been in the seats at Shea Stadium, and Mian would have still been up. Here now is Rusty Staub, the right fielder. He is tied with Cleon Jones with the most hits in the series. He has eight of them. He leads the series and runs batted in with five. Line drive center field. Base hit. Garrett will stop at second as Davileo gets the ball back into the infield. And you can see Staub swinging better, looser at the plate, that shoulder improving day by day. He was hitting everything to left field in New York and out here. And that time he wanged it right up the middle. These Mets have just been after the A's in this series. They have ripped. 53 base hits so far, and this is game number six. They've been more aggressive at the plate, Monty. They've batted as a team 269, and the A's just 197. And here's Cleon Jones, who has had eight hits, including a home run. He's batting 381 for this World Series. For the season, he hit 260. Hunter threw a slider, and it was up a little bit. Jones had a pretty good cut. In fact, the middle of that order, the three, four, five hitter stopped Jones and Milner as a trio of hit 411. Boy, that's some sock in the middle of the lineup. The biggest surprise of the series as far as the lineup for Jones, I think, is that he has hit almost everything to left field, though one of his homers went down the line and right in this park. One ball, one strike. Joe Rudy plays him very deep in left, and Vic Davalillo, the Oakland center fielder, is shaded a bit towards right. But look at the hole between Rudy and Davalillo. Rudy has certainly changed his coverage. Reggie Jackson in right field and not all that deep. Breaking ball fouled off. One ball, two strikes. The A's infield. Spearheaded by that great little shortstop, Bert Campanaris. He teams with Dick Green in a very fine double play combination. Most of the talk defensively about this series has been about Bud Harrelson and Bert Campanaris. Together, they've handled 54 chances and made only one error. Change up on him. And Davalillo in center field has the play. Runners hold on, and the A's line up in a relay. You see the A's second baseman, Dick Green, between Campanaris and the third baseman, Sal Vando. Oakland lines up three deep on the throwback end. There are two down and two on, and here is John Milner. Milner didn't hit the latter part of the season for the Mets or in the playoffs, but he's come through for them in the World Series. Seven hits in the World Series so far, and two runs batted in. He's hit 350. He led the Mets in home runs with 23 and in runs batted in with 72 and you see how the Met runners are leading away. Hunter with a breaking ball inside. That's his slow curve ball. He doesn't like that pitch. That uh, ball he wants another one. Kurt I don't know how you and Tony have found it around the National League but most American League pitchers the fastball pitchers like the ball sewn in Haiti. 
and the curveball pitchers don't like it because the seams aren't quite as high. Mm. Popped up. Out behind second. Davalio coming in, and he's waving everybody off. He puts it away, and Hunter gets out of trouble in the first inning. No runs, one hit, two left to score. Mets nothing. He's coming to bat. center field in the gap. Bando can run. Stop cuts it off. Here's his throw to the relay man. And that throw has finally cost the Mets. Bando scores. Rusty Stop couldn't get the ball back in to Felix Beyond on the fly. Mets down by two. Looking at Darren Johnson holding against Grody. Ball one. You don't look for any kind of a hit and run play or any kind of bunt here. You're down by two at this time of a game, it's usually swing away. The A's have really changed their defense on Han. First few games, they were playing him in right center, very shallow, and now Davalillo is shading him to left center in center. Outside ball two. Here's a big man for Hunter right here. Leading by two with a pitcher coming up. He doesn't want to walk this one. There's the defense that you got a quick look at. Davalillo's moved over on on and of course that triple he hit into left center field in New York helped change the pattern. He not only has that control, he changes speed so well. He does it a lot when the hitters are ahead of him, it appears, Monty, with his fastball and off his curveball, too. I think they're getting a fat pitch, and they're just out in front. On trying to go to right field with that outside pitch, which is the thing to do right here if he can. It's two balls, two strikes. The only real control problems Hunter had this year was right after he tried to come back. There's Yogi. Following the fractured thumb on the pitching hand, which he got in the All-Star game, a ball hit back through the middle by Billy Williams of the Cubs. Hunter was the starting pitcher for the American League, and it broke the thumb on his pitching hand. When he came back, he didn't really get a good grip on the ball. Struck him out on a high-breaking ball. NBC television will carry a special program at 11. Fingers and Daryl Knowles are up. Fingers on your right. Knowles on your left. John Milner, the batter for the Mets. Fly to center, grounded out. The two hits off Jim Hunter have been single. A single by Staub and a single by Grody. The A's are leading 2-0 in the seventh. They hold on. We'll go to game seven tomorrow, four o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. There's a base hit to right by John Miller. And Miller now has his eighth hit. He's batting well over 350. So is Stobb and Cleon Jones. Jerry Grody flied out and singled. When the Reds played the Mets in the playoffs, their strategy completely was to stop stop Jones and Miller they said if you did that you could beat the Mets easily well they didn't do it and neither have the A's I think the thing that surprised the A's is that Miller was not supposed to be a percentage hitter they respected his long ball power but he's hit for average in this series Jerry Grody runner on first one out 
There's a long belt deep to left. That ball's back. Rudy's on the warning track. He's got it. Rudy nearly tied this game. That'll make Dick Williams think a little bit now about his pitcher. He just gave up a line shot to Dolder. Now Brody nearly reaches the fence. Is Hunter losing a little bit? When he Dick Williams is watching him intently from the dugout. Kurt, when he does start losing it, the first sign they look for is the kind of a pitch he made to Milner. He gets up a little bit when he gets tired, and he made that up pitch to Milner, and right then they jump somebody up in the bullpen. That's two of them in a row now. How do you know when to take a pitcher out? That's one of the big reasons the manager gets paid. There are a lot of little telltale things, aren't there, Tony, when they notice a change in his delivery or his stride? Many times a catcher can tell more than anybody else. He sees that pitcher drop down, sometimes imperceptibly, to that man on the bench. Yogi was one of the best I've ever seen. As soon as he saw Whitey Ford drop a little bit down to three quarters, he's getting tired to get him out of there. Don Hahn has popped the short and struck out. The Mets have two away, Milner at first. They're trailing 2-0 in the seventh. On plate is a pull hitter to left. And Hunter's low for a ball. If we go to game seven tomorrow, Matlack very definitely will start for the New York Mets. He's been the best pitcher in this series. Ball two, that's only my opinion. I'd like to see what you fellas think. Matlack. He hasn't given up an earned run, and that's not too bad. His earned run average is zero, zero, zero. You can't do any better than that. Two and nothing. And uh, Holtzman will go for the A's. I'd say you'd have to give the Mets an edge if there would be an edge. On the pitching strength, Matlack, who's just been unbelievable through the playoffs and World Series. Ground ball to Campanera. Goes to second with it for the out. And that's it in the top of the seven. No runs, a hit, no errors, one left. The seventh inning stretch in Oakland and Oakland. Our left-handed hitters. The strike to Garrett, three and one. Oakland leading two to nothing. The Mets are challenging in the eighth. They have Kenny Boswell at first, one out. Strike two, three and two to Wayne Garrett. Felix Meon is on deck. Tuck McGraw is heating up in the Met bullpen. Depending what happens there, it could be to be he or Sadecki. There's a drive in the left center. It's in. Rudy goes over and picks it off. Coming on the third is Boswell. And the Mets have the tying runs on in the top of the eighth. As Garrett singles the left center. Now the batter will be Meon. have pitched more than the starters in this World Series for Oakland. Up until this game. Hunter's what? eight innings, or seven innings, seven and third. Much more successfully, as you can see by those earned run averages. Look at the relief job the Oakland A's pitchers have done. 1.05. Mm. All right, Knowles will face Meon. Fouled out, flying out, grounded out. Runners on first and third, one away, a ground ball hit to the right side. A runner's in, the tying run's going to third. The throw, cut off, and the Mets have the tying run at third base. The lead run at first, one away. Neon hitting behind the runner. Sends him to third, he did his job. Now we'll have to see if Dick Willies will go against the percentages and put his top relief pitcher in against the left-handed hitter, Rusty Stop. Well, the Mets, who keep coming back at you, it's been their trademark in late September of the playoffs, the World Series, never giving in, doing the little things that help them. They've had a pinch hit single, another single. Now Meon is single behind the runner to score a run and send the tying run to third. Rusty Stott has one hit in three times. It's two to one Oakland now in the eighth inning. Right, Stott. 
heard in the playoffs and the series, the Mets left-handed hitters have really done a job against left-hand pitching. Chuck McGraw loosening up in a hurry. Three hits for the Mets this inning. Tom Seaver pacing. Back two. Seaver is out of the ball game, but if his club goes ahead this inning, and then either McGraw or Sadecki held Oakland, Seaver would be the winning pitcher. Two strikes to stop. Garrett's at third, Neon's at first. Stop, strikes out. with a right-handed Cleon Jones coming up. We could see Raleigh Fingers. Raleigh Fingers will come in to pitch to Cleon Jones. Dick Williams plays the percentages. So we have the situation of Fingers walking on. We have two outs for the Mets. They've scored a run. They have runners on first and third with a break in the action. The score is Oakland 2, New York 1. Double in a run in the first, double in a run in the third. Round it out. He's the hitting star today. Two out of three. There's a, pay, a drive in the center, a base hit. Ball gets by! Jackson will come to third. This could be a big, that could be a big play now. Howard thought he had a chance for a shoestring catch. Ed could not break himself quickly enough, got the in-between hop, and I don't know, he may have been blinded by the sun. I, he just put his glove out in front of him, hoping he would hit into it. Well, it's very hard by Jackson. Hans got to chase it down himself, as it was in dead center field, and Jackson has good speed. Could be a big run, Kirk. It's a single for Jackson and a two-base error on Don Hahn. And now the Mets have to bring the infield in. They can't give up another run. Dean Tennyson. Looks at a high breaking pitch. Ball one. Tennyson struck out, pops up and grounded out. Out on deck is Jesus Salou. The bat for Vic Davalillo. Two to one, A's. Ball two to Gene Kenner. Reggie Jackson at third, nobody out. And Fingers would rather have a two-run lead than a one-runner going out there. So that's two base error by Hahn. Inside, so you know. Tennis, the man they would like to see start hitting if this series should go into the seventh game of the bar. He's been up in situations during the series where a hit could have helped out an awful lot. Three balls and no strikes. Time call. Buddy Harrelson uh, playing about halfway at short. He just about reach out and touch his third baseman Garrett. He's very close to him. Really playing tennis to pull. That one pitches over three and one. Irrepressible Tuck McGraw. Says he can have fun even on a stalled elevator. Fun loving guy, 3 1 pitch. He fooled him with a scroogey that time. That's his screwball. 3 and 2. Reggie Jackson at third, nobody out. Ball four. And the A's had runners on first and third. McGraw's the clock. Where was it? Kirk, you know, before the game, Sal Bendel said we've been having a hard time figuring out how McGraw's going to pitch us. A lot of the A's players went to New York thinking that he was going to try to get them out most of the time with slow curves and screwballs, and they were all taking the fastball for the strike. You notice Jackson hit the fastball, and Tennis kept waiting on it and waiting on it and almost never got it. Dean Tennis has not hit much in this series, but he's received 10 walks. The world, there's Sadecki again warming up. Series record is 11 walks held by Babe Ruth in the seven game series back in 26. Jesus Alou batting for Davileo. The infield is still in. Runners on first and third. The ball to Jesus Alou. 
Oakland ahead two to one. They're trying to stay alive. There's a fly ball to left field that should score a run. Hanging up is Jackson. The catch by Jones. The throw goes to second base. And getting back to first for Gene Tennis. The eighth lead, three to one. A sacrifice fly for Jesus to lose. Tennis really worked that time to try to draw that throw from the left fielder. He took off tagging up at first base, and that's an A's play they use quite a bit. Well, now it's a two-run lead for the Mets, or for the A's, three to one. They've had seven hits. The Mets six hits. Darren Johnson, one for three today. Gene Tennis at first, one out. A ball. The Met batters of the ninth inning, Milner, Grody, and Hahn. One and one. Top foul back out of play. Jesus Alou is warming up his throwing arm in the A's bullpen. And he'll probably go to right field with Reggie Jackson moving to center field in the top of the ninth inning. That's a Lou who just came up with a sacrifice fly to left. There's a drive foul. Johnson drilled that one. One ball, two strikes. Tennis at first base, one out. A one two pitch. Low. Two and two. There's a screw ball again, and he missed with it. Three balls, two strikes. Tennis looking. Some kind of a sign to see if he'll start on this pitch. In the second inning, they started him. But he's not going. In fact, he was going. He stayed, uh, sort of tried to delay there. He didn't go, and then he went. And Johnson strikes out into a double play. One run. One hit, one error. Nobody left at the end of eight. Three to one, Oakland. The bullpen catcher would run out to left field. Yeah, John Odom had just thrown the ball away. And as a matter of fact, Kurt, there was a ball on the field when Fingers made that two-ball no-strike pitch, and Williams thought the umpires in left field had stopped the play, and he was, I think, yelling at the umpire for not doing that. See that fluttering ribbon out there? That could distract the batter. Now they get it out of the way. Three balls, no strikes to John Milner. As he leads it off for the Mets in the ninth inning. The Mets trailing three to one. Three and one count. Foul back. Three and two. Fly ball hits a deep right. Jesus Salou has room and puts it away. One down in the ninth. Now the batter, Gary Grody. He's fly to left, single, and fly it out to deep left on the warning path to Joe Rudy. Nearly tying this game up in the seventh. Oakland three, New York one. Ninth inning. The Mets have two outs left. Oh, 
Downing ball to the right side. Dick Green. Plenty of time. Two down. Don Hahn is going to be replaced by Ed Cranepool. Cranepool will bat for Hahn. And if Fingers gets this final out, tomorrow the World Championship will be decided. We'll be on air on NBC at 4 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time for following a professional football game, a football-baseball doubleheader tomorrow on NBC. Going to be something, three World Series in a row going to seven games. They've been tight. Brain pool batting. Two out, bases empty. Starting pitchers tomorrow, if Oakland holds the Mets here in the ninth inning, would be left-hander Matt Lack for the Mets and left-hander Holtzman for the A's and everybody else in the bullpen. Two down. a good pitch he has when he's down low with it. A stinking fastball around the knee. Heard you can see Fossey double up his fist. He's that kind of an inspirational player. He really gets the most out of these guys. Just that little urging sign there. There's a shot that is hit the green. The ball game is over. And the World Series goes for the seventh game tomorrow. back and send it to the final day. But the hero today for Oakland has to be Jim Hunter, who gave the same kind of pressure pitching that he displayed in a fifth game against the Baltimore Orioles when he shut them out to give Oakland the American League Championship. And it was Jim Hunter's pitching today and the bat of Reggie Jackson, who came alive with two doubles and a single. He knocked in two of the three runs. Charlie Finley, who's been a, the eye of the storm in this series as he goes away. And we'll be back now to recap game six right after this message. Joe Rudy got the A's started in the first inning with a base hit to the opposite field off starting Mets pitcher Tom Seaver. Reggie Jackson also went with the outside pitch and hit a double to the wall in left center. Rudy scored as the Mets overthrew the cutoff man, giving the A's and Catfish Hunter a one to nothing lead. In the third inning, Oakland got another run in a similar fashion. Sal Bando bounced a single to center. Then Reggie Jackson ripped another double, this one into right center. Rusty Staub's underhand throw to Mian was short. Mian dropped the bouncing throw, and Bando scored run number two. The Mets' only run came in the eighth when Ken Boswell scored on a single by Mian. After the A's scored another run, Ed Cranepole's short pop-up ended the game 3-1. to one. A's relief pitcher Raleigh Fingers was credited with saving the game for starting pitcher Catfish Hunter. Dick Kay, NBC News. That's the news for this Saturday evening. Felix Mion was acquired by the Mets prior to that 73 season and solidified the middle of the Mets infield. A good glove and a great pivot. Mion batted 290 with 185 hits in 73. The following year, Mion set a still standing team record with 24 sacrifice hits. And in 1975, he had 191 hits, tying for the third highest single season total in Mets history. His final year with the Mets was 1977. Felix Mion's abilities drew a tip of the cap from teammate Rusty Staub, who acknowledges what the second baseman meant 
to the team's success in 73. I remember a great two-strike hitter, a guy who choked up on the bat a lot, was a very good fielder, turned the double play well, uh, was one of the scrappiest two-strikes hitters in the game. Uh, I used to like marvel at how dumb some of the pitchers were. They'd get ahead of him with two strikes and they'd try to jam him, and he'd hit, hit all those balls over the pitcher and over the second baseman for base hits, and he, uh, he was a tough out. I thought he was a terrific player.